This is Channel 7's Big Ten Ticket with Don Shane and Bo Schembechler. Hello everybody, I'm Don Shane. Welcome to Michigan Stadium for the most important football game so far this season for these Wolverines. If they win, they still have a shot at the Big Ten title. They still have a shot at going to the Rose Bowl. Should they lose, I think you can forget about the Big Ten title and maybe forget about a big bowl game as well. Joining me as he always does each and every week, the coach Bo Schembechler. Let's talk about emotion first because can the emotion of this team today overcome some of the problems they've had the last six weeks even though they've won those games they haven't looked very good they have to have emotion they have to have emotion particularly on their offense because uh, they got to sustain their blocks longer the backs have to run and when they're hit they got to get the extra yard they have to do more than they have done in any of the previous eight games but the big thing about emotion is this Don the defense this will be a defensive battle two great defensive football teams, two average offensive teams, and uh, the emotion on defense. Whoever has the greatest defensive effort today and plays the best will have the best chance to win. All right, let's talk about some players on defense. First of all, Marcus Ray is back from his suspension. Not that he's going to have a huge role defensively, but he said some things coming off the field last year at Penn State. Hey, we're Michigan. They're Penn State. They don't like it. It's kind of a war of words. They're upset by it. Does that play a role in this at all? Well, you know, he hadn't played. He played two games this year. We lost them both. And so, and he hadn't played <laughs> since. So, I, whatever he says, I don't think is going to be a big factor. But words are spoken, all, even with Michigan and Ohio State. Harbaugh said some things years ago. It doesn't mean a thing, right? What makes the difference? If you tell me that they're going to get higher because of that, I don't believe it. Both teams are going to be sky high. This is what college football is all about. We're here in November in one of the biggest games of the year, and, and these both these teams are going to be super jacked. Right. So let's don't worry about who said what about what. All right. Each team offensively is not that great, no big stars. So it is very possible that a defensive player, such as linebacker LeVar Arrington for Penn State, could be the impact player in this game. True or not? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I say that is because I've watched this guy play. He's the finest linebacker in the nation that I've seen this year. He's better than Katzenmoyer. This guy is faster. He has better hands. Uh, he, uh, he can cover more ground. Uh, and he's only a sophomore. The guy is an absolute great player. He could dominate a game. He really could defensively. We got to get a helmet on him and sustain some blocks and get him blocked or he'll be in our backfield all day. When people look at this Michigan team now, one of the things they point to is the offensive line because they can't run the ball or having great problems running the ball. Is that fair? And the line is struggling, is it not? The line is struggling, yes. They've had some injuries there. They haven't quite played up to their uh, uh, potential, I would say. And, but there's other factors. We haven't established a back that's going to run north and south, run over people, come out the other end, be willing to carry that ball 25 times and get us 100, 150 yards. You've got to have that if you're going to have a running game. Uh, we've had some, probably uh, have made some bad decisions on some of the plays that we've called. And uh, there are times that we've run plays in there where we've left an unblocked guy right at, right at the line of scrimmage, either a linebacker or somebody. And those things have got to stop. But more than anything else, Don, you cannot have the uh, turnovers. You cannot have the penalties. You can't stop yourself. If they expect to win this game. The six-game winning streak is certainly nice for Michigan, but Penn State is far better than any of the teams Michigan has beaten over the past six games. As Dave Llewellyn tells us, the easy stuff is over. They best be prepared to play the best football game of the year so far. Michigan's real season begins today against Penn State. This is why you come to Michigan. Right here. Right now. This week. When you take the field on Saturday afternoon, uh, that's going to be something that you can't, uh, you, you're not ever going to get back. You don't get many opportunities to play in a game like this. And uh, so you want to be ready to do your best. The Nittany Lions have an outstanding defense. They're ranked ninth in the nation, and the memory of last year's 34-8 whipping by the Wolverines will be fresh on their minds. 
it was Michigan's finest effort in a national championship season. Lloyd Carr is concerned with Joe Paterno's talented team, not the revenge factor. Uh, they have a lot at stake. I mean, that's a great football team, and they can uh, have a great season. And this is, uh, they're still in the championship race. They're, they're still in uh, a race for uh, a big bowl game. So, uh, you know, they've got a lot at stake. I don't know that uh, they need any motivation other than that. The Penn State game is the first of three straight challenges that will determine Michigan's season. And it again, here he goes. Next week, Ron Dane and the unbeaten Badgers will come to town. The game against the Buckeyes in Columbus will follow. Oh, look out. Brady hit on the blitz. At the There's a chance Michigan could be an underdog three straight weeks. Despite inconsistent and subpar play offensively, the Wolverines say they'll be ready for the games of November. It might look ugly, but we're winning somehow. So um, I think we're going to get this running game together this week, and we're going to try to get this passing game together also. So we got to just have a balance offensively and go from there. We have to to beat Penn State. It's a three-game season right now, and this game is you know, the biggest game in our season. And, and so that's the way we're focusing on it, and, and I think that we're ready, and I, and I think that we can put a complete game together. You can say whatever you want, but, you know, we've won the games that we needed to win here, and uh, we were on our back, we got up. Uh, you know, there's a quote that I like, it's, it says, uh, the only failure in falling is failing to get back up. And, and we've gotten back up, and now we've got a chance to, uh, to do something great, and I, and I think we're going to be ready to do that. The stretch end of the season is what we like to put an emphasis on, because if you can't finish then what's the point? You have to be able to finish. And if additional motivation from the head coach is necessary, Lloyd Carr will be prepared. However, at his press conference this week, Carr corrected a reporter who asked if he'll have a Newt Rockne-type pep talk ready. I might deliver a Fielding Yost speech, or a Bo Schembechler, or a Fritz Chrysler, but never, never Newt Rockne. That's a great, great quote from Lloyd Carr. You know what I think Joe Paterno thought that his team would be okay this year, decent this year, but maybe not as good as they've turned out to be. But he did, however, think that Michigan would be better than what they've shown so far. They've killed themselves very much as we have. They've made uh, uh, they've had penalties in key spots. They've had a lot of turnovers. They don't turn over the ball. They're they're. A, Probably as good offensively as they were last year. Their linebackers, defensive line, defensive backs, they all have great speed and uh, great recovery. Um, they hustle. They hustle with the ball well. Uh, you know, they come out with a lot of emotion, a lot of fire, and uh, certainly they like to put pressure on the quarterback. And um, you know, they they blitz a lot, and they uh, you know they get in the backfield quite often. You got to go out there and. One down you're going to win a little bit, and next down you're going to lose a little bit, and next one you're going to win a little bit, and next one you're going to lose a little bit. It's going to be a real dogfight out there. Indeed it is. We are coming back with more of the Big Ten ticket, and when we do, this guy to my left, Bo Schembechler, will sit down and have a conversation with Joe Paterno, one of the most respected and winningest coaches in all of college football. And here's your first play. Pressure coming. Sack. It is Glenn Steele, number 81, who fought his way through the traffic. A slow, developing play-action thing that was blown apart by the rush of Glenn Steele. We're definitely embarrassed by what happened to us out here. I mean, we came into the game expecting, I mean, to beat Michigan, and they came here and really hit us on the chin pretty hard. I mean, it was definitely embarrassing. Joe Paterno won his 300th game as a head coach. Any way you examine Paterno or his program, it is hugely successful. Well, Bo and Joe greeted each other with big smiles as they sat down to talk a little football recently, coach to coach, and here's how it went. <laughs> Joe, you've been in the league now for five years. Is it about what you expected? No, it's tougher. No way. And if you had stayed in the league, no. Bo, I would have... <laughs> I would have been out of it. No, 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 no. It's no, tough. No. It really is. I is think it? that, yeah, I think that. Uh, it was the right thing for you to do, though. It, it was it? great for us. It really was. Yeah. It, it, uh, it, you know, our fans didn't like it at first, some of them. You know, you're not playing Syracuse, not playing, but now they're all caught up in, the, yeah. in this thing, and it's really, it's really well, been great for us. That's great. That's great. Joe, I see these defense, you know, I've been out of it. I see these defense. My God, they come after you every down. Every down. They're out there playing man to man. Are, 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 is there a possibility we could see a trend back to some more option? 
Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because it's the one thing that, you know, you, that, not, that has made Nebraska different than, than, yeah. than probably everybody. That, that those defenses can't handle Nebraska because yeah. they can't handle they can't handle load option. They, they, yeah. they stick the trap in and now they got another one where they got the everybody leading the quarterback up and they got a little gimmick Tommy put in there last year. So I think there's gonna be more and more people with the option. Yeah. I would love to go to the option, but I've not, we've not recruited those kind of I kids. know every, no, but uh, see, everybody I've, looks at that and says, boy you could run option against that. Yeah. And uh, but if you don't have the guy, forget uh, it. You know, and then you gotta have a couple. Yeah. You gotta have when, yeah. you know when you were when you guys were running the option, I mean that was you were bread and butter recruited guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, well, I, we, we, you know, we never put, up until the last few years, we never put a quarterback in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a mess of them in there now. Yeah. They, oh, yeah now, yeah. they, you know, they, they throw the ball a lot and do yeah. a lot of those things. Yeah, it's a lot different. Yeah. Should we add a 12th team? Well, you know we'd know better than I would. Because I don't know. I, You know, they, they asked me that. Um, but... I, you know what I'd like to see? Here's what I'd like to see. I'd like somebody to sit down and say, okay, this is team A. I don't, I don't care what. Here's, we're going to try to get them in the, in the conference if that's what they want to do. Now, here's the way this thing will play out. This would be our division. This would be a section. This would be a section mm -hmm. or a division. This is how we would schedule. This is what it would mean to us financially and all forth. Right? Right? That's team A. Now then we'll take team B and we'll plug team B in and then put that thing together and then you can make a decision as to whether it's good or bad. That's what people say to me, well Notre Dame comes in as well team. First thing I say, that's great. Notre Dame's Notre Dame, you know, you like to play yeah. them. You know, you know, Michigan's playing them, Michigan yeah. State's playing. I'd love to be a I'd love to play Notre Dame again. I think it would be great. But I'm not sure. I haven't seen anything. I don't know. I, I, I could be, you know, I could be. Well, you can't have Notre Dame uh, put, go into divisions, have Notre Dame in the East with Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, and Michigan State. <laughs> I mean, that's a little unbalanced. That, that, that's the year, that's the year after I retire. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's for sure. Yeah. So I, I come into the league happy that they have <laughs> Happy, happy well, I've you, survived. Well, well, you've and, done I'm not right. a, and I'm not about to tell them how to yeah, run well, it. You know, I'm not, I wish I knew a little bit more. You know, there's so much history in this conference yeah. and it's such you know it, it yeah, people talk about uh, why is it tougher well you know what there's, these schools have such great traditions they don't they don't lie down and play that for you I played some teams that didn't really think they could beat us they might have been as good as we were talent wise but the minute something went wrong oh here we go again yeah you know what I mean that, yeah. you know it, yeah. it, it, it's, a, it, it's yeah. really been there's so many and the schools are so good well, you kind of you kind of like that guy, and he's he's yeah. one of the guys who was around when you were around, obviously. But he's adapted and changed somewhat right. so that he can continue to be successful, and I think that's part of the reason why he's been so successful. Well, I envy him, you know, to be able to coach that long, and and Joe's uh, healthy, robust, and he can still coach. And uh, when Joe goes and Bobby Bowden. Lavelle Edwards out of Brigham Young. My way of thinking, that will be the end of the coaches that stay at the same place for 20, 30 years. Money is too big and they travel around. There are too many temptations to go elsewhere. Is that what you're saying? Part no, of it? yeah, I think so. And, and I think that uh, uh, people are less tolerant of, of a bad year. You know, um, but he we've all been through, even Joe, he's had a 6'5 or 6'6, six, six, just like I did. And, uh, but uh, there's never been any talk at Penn State that they're going to get rid of Joe Paterno. <laughs> This week's Toughy Tough Guy of the Week, Michigan wide receiver Ty Streets. He was sensational against the Gophers last weekend. Big part of his day, the 76-yard TD catch and run, and it helped the Wolverines keep that little brown jug. Ty Streets is the Toughy Tough Guy of the Week. When they look like they're in trouble, uh, they've gone the street, and Street's made big plays, and, and, and they were, they've gone on and won the football game. I think Street, there's no question in my mind, he's a, he's a, you know, he'd be in the same league with Boston and some of the other great wideouts I've seen this year.
All right, Joe Paterno talking about Ty Streets. He has had a marvelous year. But explain to everybody, if you will, people always say, all right, they can't run the football. If they're going to put all those guys up in the last group, just throw the ball to Ty Streets. Explain to everybody why that's not as easy as they well, think it is. Generally speaking, you don't like somebody else dictating to you what you're going to do. Now, if they consistently put eight in the box and they stay in the box, then you should be passing more often than running. However, they line up with eight in the box, but before the snap of the ball, they stem out of there, and they're in a conventional seven in the box defense. So you can't just line up there and say, well, looks to me like there's eight. Let's go to the air. You can't do that. And that's why uh, I hope we don't get into a situation where we think we can only beat Penn State throwing the ball. All right, well, we shall find out. We're moments away from kickoff. That's our show for this weekend. I'm Don Chain for this guy, Bo Schembechler. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the football game. Coming up next, right here on Channel 7. Channel 7's Big Ten Ticket has been brought to you in part by your 31 Metro Detroit Ford dealers. By Tuffy Auto Service Centers. With 33 Detroit area locations, there's one near you. For brakes, mufflers, shocks, and more, that's a Tuffy. And by First Plus Financial, call 1-800-510-PLUS.